Welcome to Modern Work Mentor. I'm Daryl as a service. At your service, I'm answering questions that you left on my video about the new team's calendar. Now, Austin asks about reminders and that when we're using the new calendar, how do we get it to pop up a reminder like we can with Outlook and we've had for years? 15 minutes before the meeting, does it pop up and tell us? So we'll go into the calendar here and create a quick event. Um, and jump in there, new event. Actually, probably should go to today. We'll drop that in, round about here, new meeting. And we'll expand the new meeting to drop in some more details, better invite someone. And what we can see is the usual ability to set a reminder, but it doesn't pop up anywhere in Teams. So while we can set this, and I think this is for consistency, that if we set a meeting from within Teams, that it is going to remind us in various places that we have Outlook, like on our mobile phones, or maybe Outlook that we've got open on our desktop. And when we've got that set, um, we can send that meeting invite. But you will notice, if I go into settings, for example and take a look at the notification settings and activity. Let's scroll down to the meetings area. There are three types of notifications we get for meetings. When the meeting starts, we'll get a pop-up. Great, so we can join it. Um, when we get chat notifications for the meeting and we can set how that uh, behaves. Do you see anything here about reminders? No. Um, and in the calendar section down here, we've got new invites, so we can get invites that um, we can use and respond from our activity center, and when people forward meetings that, that we have organized ourselves. Nothing around reminders. So I believe that this is really more for consistency, that when I create an invite here in Teams, that it is just allowing me to remind me and other apps and devices that we'll get the reminder for. Uh, I don't know if we will truly use Teams as a complete replacement for a calendar unless we do get something like that and we can safely leave Outlook closed and turned off. But then who does that? <laughs> Good question though, Austin. Thank you. Um, we have uh, Darren who's asking from uh, 365 Assist um, about layering calendars and seeing other calendars over the top of your own calendar. What I do have here in Laura's experience is that we have her calendar, we've got birthdays, and we can show calendars from different groups. In fact, if I went and said, let's say, show more calendars, um, I could probably show and display additional calendars there. Let's see if I can add and I can add a new group. Um, what I'm finding here is that, um, and just quickly from memory, that I can't actually go and find a calendar uh, from my directory, a colleague, a team member, someone who's sharing that calendar with me. I can't layer that over. Um, what I can do is just uh, set that up from Outlook. And I think we're seeing the reverse from the other thing we discussed. We can do something from within Outlook and it will reflect here within our team's experience. So I might just do that. I'm going to go up to Outlook Web Access here in the web browser. We'll go into my calendar. Uh, we'll also open up or say Add Calendar. And we'll add it from our directory, choose the account, choose my name, and then we'll add it to the People's Calendar group. Okay, so that's going to show within Outlook, of course, and you can see that here. There it is, the People's Calendar in Daryl. Um, it, hasn't, it hasn't shown live here in my calendar experience in Teams. Uh, let's go and maybe switch between the apps. I think there was a, a slight delay before that calendar turns up, um, and we can start to see it in different calendars or rather we start to see different calendars here in teams but darren's question is also pointing out that some of us also have multiple email accounts 
And when we're signed in with multiple email accounts and Outlook, especially classic Outlook, we can overlay the calendars from those different accounts and manage various different parts of our lives across those uh, accounts in a single view. So yeah, this is a shortcoming. We cannot um, add additional accounts into Teams and show uh, those calendars laid over. Uh, we have Phil. Phil's been waiting for this uh, this feature for a while. Um, he said that uh, using the Outlook Web Action uh, Web App version for some time, uh, and so he's not having problems trying to adjust. So that's cool. Manu has some good questions down here. Um, one of them being that he he's a meeting organizer, a bit like me, and in classic uh, Teams, if I can call it that. We have, uh, when we open up a, an event or a meeting, we get a, um, a kind of a, a view of apps that we can add, recap. We can see all sorts of things along the top there in a tabular view. Let's have a look at that in the web browser experience of that. I'll go into meeting with notes, which was about a month ago, and we'll open up that meeting environment. And currently, today, which is the 20th of February here in New Zealand, uh, I cannot switch to the new calendar in the web experience. So this is the only view I have in web. As I open up that event, I have the tabs along the top. I can engage and chat directly from looking at the meeting invite. I can check out the files that are uh, attached as part of the meeting. Details, there we go. So that's our meeting and um if we've had the meeting, then we've got our recap. Uh, and he also was quite keen on adding things like polls and interactive things um, before the meeting begins so that you can uh, be all prepared and ready to run an interactive session. So I like that style, Manu. That's really cool. Um, and yeah, you're right. If we go down to our new calendar within Teams and we'll go back to the 20th of February... And there we go, oh, 24th, meeting notes, there it is. Expand that. We see what we would normally see in Outlook Web Access uh, and a new Outlook, that we see that form, we see uh, you know, the full experience of being able to create a meeting invite and the various controls, even things that we looked at earlier around adjusting um, the uh, reminder time. But how do we get back into seeing chat, being able to see the apps, preparing for the meeting as a meeting organizer? And I like his tip here where uh, you click on chat and then that will take you through to the meeting and your chat experience and then you can see the tabs along the top. So if you're doing this ahead of time, that means that you can go in and add a poll for the meeting or series of polls. Um, you can you know, add different apps as well that you might be using for interactive purposes. And uh, yeah, so this is, this is your shortcut, but it kind of takes you back to that classic experience, as, as Manu pointed out in his, in his comment there in question. So very true. Um, and Manu also helped me out because in my previous video, uh, which I've linked somewhere, of course, in the video, if you want to go back and check it out, um, that's uh, at about 4 minutes, 13 seconds, I was looking at the calendar and uh, was trying to figure out how to quickly um, turn off all the filters. Now, with a meeting um, and calendars, uh, Within a calendar, you can set things like categories. So let's just do that, um, blue category. Um, we could uh, right-click this one and maybe what do we do? Oh, this might be one that someone else has organized, so that's cool. Um, what I'll do is use the filter button up here, and I was going through and demonstrating things like, okay, well, uh, I'm, I'm interested in meetings that have uh, unselect all and just show the blue category meeting. Right, so we can see there's just that meeting displayed. Maybe I'll also show show as, unselect, and maybe show just the ones that are busy. And so you can start to turn on all these filters and uh, make it easy for yourself to sort of go through just various meetings. Really like that feature, but I was struggling in the video to try and um, go back and set things the way that I like. And I didn't really see this clear filters button. 
clearly. Sometimes I record when it's at silly times of day or I'm tired and I miss those sorts of things. So remember there's a clear filter button here. It'll take you back to your starting state. We don't yet have anything here to set up uh, your own kind of filtered views. Like maybe you want to set a view up to show um, uh, certain categories to reflect on a project and maybe prioritizing um, client-based meetings as part of that. You, you know, you can't quite set that up yet uh, as a way of um, making a persistent or easily switchable view for things in your calendar. Hey, um, that's about it, I think, uh, in terms of... Oh, no, there's one more question here from Day, Dame Tam, um, where found the video helpful, uh, finally gets meeting notes in EDU, so that's really cool in 2025. Uh, meeting notes being uh, that uh, when we go into a meeting, we can add a Microsoft loop, and uh, that allows you to share those meeting notes with people in uh, the meeting who are part of your organization. Um, sadly, not shared with guests yet, but we can take notes together and we can always refer back to those notes on the, the meeting invite. So he's excited about seeing that within the education space um, and was wondering how he would trigger the agenda with the new calendar item. So if we were to create a new meeting within, and we'll go to today, and um, maybe we could go to that meeting invite that we created it earlier. So it's the same if we were editing it. We are editing it now. Let's edit that. And we have the ability to add meeting notes at the bottom here. Uh, so that means that ahead of time, I've already you know, maybe set the agenda that we're going to cover this cover that, um, maybe ask a couple of other things to prepare for meeting, and then maybe list a couple of tasks there. And so ahead of time, this is attached to the meeting invite, and people within our organization can see this. So you'll be able to do this directly from the new calendar, uh, which is great. It means that we can do that. And um, strange thing, though, it means that we still can't seemingly do that from Outlook on the web. Um, I believe that was the case. If I just go back in and maybe create a new meeting again. Um, good, good, all saved. I could be mis misremembering things. Misremember and drop in Daryl as an invitee. And yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I don't have that option to add meeting notes uh, underneath the description field of an Outlook meeting invite. Uh, whether it be classic or new, um, it's still a experience that only can add meeting notes when you're in Teams. So if I can collectively say across these comments, there's definitely some things that we all like in this community that we can do within our Outlook calendar or um, things that we can do within Teams, and we don't have that true kind of overlap and convergence of being able to do everything in the same place. So sadly, people, it means you will still need to have Outlook open and Teams uh, if you were hoping to just get away with using one app. But you know, realistically, I think we'll all still have to answer email on some level because it, it is the uh, universal standard. It doesn't matter which app and which platform you use, we can communicate across that. And uh, yeah, calendars, we'll both, we'll have to still manage a few things here and there from our calendars uh, in Outlook or Teams, depending on what you need. Thanks for all your questions uh, from the community there. I'm going to try and do this a little more. Uh, I like it, you know, it's, it's more about focusing in on what do you want to know, and let's figure stuff out together, um, and you know, kind of get tired of playing the YouTube game where oh I've got to find the right thing and get the right likes and views and target it all let's just figure it out together and answer questions and thank you for your answers too I'm, I'm learning stuff from you as you point things out cheers see you again soon bye for now